Before I get started, I just want to make a quick disclaimer. This is not necessarily the only method to conduct a successful ATRP, nor the best way necessarily. But following this procedure, you should be able to achieve desired results pretty reliably. The materials I use in this video to conduct a polymerization include a freshly distilled monomer, an initiator, copper 1 chloride, a ligand, and anisole, which I'll use as the reaction solvent. I'll run the reaction in a two neck round bottom flask equipped with a stir bar and gas flow adapter. Prior to going into the lab, I calculated the amount of each component needed and wrote those values in my lab notebook. I first added the initiator. Since I only used a few milligrams in this example, I prepared a stock solution in anisole with a known concentration. That way the amount of initiator added is more reliable and easier to reproduce. After adding each reagent, I also made a note in my notebook with the amount added. That way I have a record of what I did. Next up, I added the monomer. Going from here, I'll speed the video up some, that way it's not such a long video. Next up, I added some anisole in addition to the anisole that was added from the initiator stock solution. After the anisole, using a piece of whey paper, I'm going to add uh, the ligand, which in this case is a powder-like solid. Once I weigh out the appropriate amount, I'll add it to the reaction flask. The last reagent I'll add is the copper 1 chloride, which is a white solid. And just like the ligand, I'll add it to a piece of whey paper and then transfer it to the reaction flask. And before I start the freeze bump thaw process, I'll add the gas flow adapter with some grease to seal the flask. So the next step in this process is to perform a few cycles of freeze pump thaw to remove any dissolved oxygen in the reaction mixture. And to do this, I've clamped my flask and am freezing it in liquid nitrogen. Once the reaction mixture is sufficiently frozen, I will open the stopcock to my vacuum line to remove any air from the headspace.
After applying vacuum for a few minutes, I closed the stopcock and removed the flask from the liquid nitrogen. I will then thaw the reaction mixture using a water bath. After the reaction mixture thawed, the dissolved air formed bubbles in the solution, which then occupy the headspace within the flask. You can also notice the reaction mixture has changed to a more brownish color. The color of an ATRP reaction mixture depends on several factors, including the copper type and ligand used. In this case, a dark red-brown is typical. After the reaction mixture is fully thawed again, I will remove the flask from the water bath and then freeze it again using liquid nitrogen. And then I'll repeat this freeze pump thaw process two or three more times to ensure that all the air, and most importantly the oxygen, has been removed from the flask. To be thorough, I'll include the whole freeze pump thaw process, but if you would like to skip to the next step, I'll put a link in the video.
At this point, I apply vacuum one final time and notice that my vacuum gauge needle did not move, indicating the flask was thoroughly degassed. While the reaction mixture is still frozen, I backfill the headspace with nitrogen and then thaw the flask one last time. You'll notice now the reaction mixture has that kind of dark red-brown color that I described earlier in the video. To start the polymerization, I place the flask in a preheated oil bath. Typically, I'll initially have nitrogen flowing into the flask. This allows the pressure to equilibrate as the mixture heats up, and after a few minutes, I will close the stopcock to seal the flask. To monitor the progress of the polymerization, I use the glass syringe with a needle to remove a small portion, and use proton NMR to determine the monomer conversion and approximate the polymerization rate. Once the polymerization reached to the desired conversion or molecular weight, I removed the flask from the oil bath, opened the flask to air, and took a small portion for one final NMR. Lastly, I diluted the reaction mixture with THF. To remove the copper catalyst, I will use a column filled with alumina. The copper should be stuck in the alumina while the rest of the reaction mixture will pass through the column. You can use pressure to make this process go faster, and usually I will add additional solvent to ensure I recover all of the polymer. You'll notice now that there is a slight blue color at the top of the alumina, which is the removed copper. Since only a few milligrams was used, it is fairly small. After passing the reaction mixture through, you can concentrate down the polymer solution and purify the polymer using precipitation or another appropriate method. That is all for this video. Please leave any questions or feedback you might have down in the comments. Thank you for watching and have a great day.